traffic in now the city of Baltimore has been thrown into a 30-day state of emergency after a bridge collapsed when it was rammed by a cargo ship in the early hours of the morning. Two people have been rescued while emergency services continue to search for more. Speaking earlier, the governor of Maryland praised frontline workers for their quick response to the tragedy. I, I have to say I'm thankful for the folks who, who once the, you know, once the warning came up, and once notification came up uh, that there was a May Day, who literally, by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. They saved lives last. They saved lives last night. Well, joining us now is diving and rescue expert Dick Barton. Um, good afternoon to you, Dick. Good afternoon to you. Um, How are you doing? I, I would imagine any uh, search uh, involving water in those conditions, as in it was dark, etc., are always going to be trouble um, and, and difficult and challenging. Uh, what it looks here is the possibility that some of the people that were searching or are searching for might have been in cars, because although they stopped some cars, they can't rule out the possibility that some of those that they haven't found, and it looks as if there are some people that they cannot locate, might be in vehicles, which I would imagine brings a whole new dimension to a search and rescue in those conditions. You know, in anything of this nature is devastating. It's unprepared, of course. It's dark. It's cold. You're in temperatures of eight degrees, and your survival time is between one and three hours. And in a fast-flowing river, it's a terrifying uh, scenario. And it, I was about to say, I mean, what are the logistics of that? So, you know, a team of divers go in, they take a boat out to as near as they can safely get to a scene like that, because I would imagine, I mean, this was a cargo boat full of those big containers, that in itself uh, poses a, a massive threat of how close you can get to it, because that could tip or go even further. Um, is that a case of you take the boat out, a rescue team, when it's safe to do so, simply dive in and start looking? Is, is it as simple as that? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the most important thing is to keep the rescue team safe as well. They don't go into a jeopardy and uh, to make the environment as safe as possible. And when you're in that kind of condition where the water's flowing at that speed, the temperature is, is dropping, the exposure time is significant now because we're, we're some many hours on from the incident and uh, we don't know what we're looking for is you have to take into account the drift and the speed of the, of the river and where potentially anybody could be washed down river and uh, work it out from there. I mean, that, these are live pictures that we're looking at as well, Dick, at the moment, and we, yeah. we can see it. It doesn't take a genius in architecture or even search and rescue to see how devastating uh, that would have been. And, and I guess when you're dealing with rivers, I know that, you know, when I've spoken to uh, police divers who work along the River Thames and places like that, they, yeah. you know, they talk about undercurrents and the like. You know, you can... If somebody falls from one bridge uh, within almost seconds, they can be at another bridge. The, the, the undercurrent can, can be that brutal and fast. Yeah. I, I think the pros and cons, the, the Patapka River is uh, very shallow. It's only 15 metres. Uh, the speed of water is significant. Um, and really, the, the technology that's being deployed now, so we have divers, we have air assets available, underwater drones at work and sonar. And, of course, we're in the hands of the most competent and one of the most competent rescue organisations in the world, the US Coast Guard is. And, and anybody involved in salvage or recovery or rescue attempts never gives up anyway. So we always, always keep going right down to the, the last moment when we have confirmation of loss. Yeah. And, well, I was going to say, I mean, not to, to preempt anything, but it, you know, we're dealing with water here and human beings cannot survive for many hours underwater, trapped or, or otherwise. And it would be extraordinary yeah. if, if there were still to be anybody in that river that... Um, anybody would come out alive after a prolonged period of time. Well, you know, stranger things have happened as they stay at sea. The, the temperature of the water can actually conserve the body as well, and uh, everything slows down. So there's always a possibility of a live recovery and retrieval, and we always hope that there's going to be a positive outcome to any event like this, as catastrophic as it appears to be. Indeed. Dick, stay with us. Let's just hear um, from another expert we had on earlier, the maritime expert David McFarlane. He spoke to Kevin Alex earlier on Talk TV describing what might have happened to the cargo ship before it crashed. That's crucial to the story. Here's what he had to say. There would have been quite detailed calculations before the ship sailed from the, the dock. Uh, the ship also had two pilots on board. The pilots would have shared their 
um, information with the master of the ship. They have to do a formal uh, master pilot exchange that details the ship's maneuvering characteristics. The pilots will offer um, any details regarding the trip down the river, whether there's any dangers in the river. And there is a very, very narrow channel. It's probably narrow enough just for one vessel at a time to pass down there. And she simply veered off that channel, veered off course and hit the, the, the pillar. And just responding to that, Dick, uh, for a second again, uh, that, I mean, that word accident uh, is there for a reason. Um, think, terrible things happen, whether they're on our roads, whether they're on our rivers. Sometimes there may be a human error component. Sometimes uh, something within the system, within the, the navigation system, goes skew if uh, and puts things out of yeah. place and out of kilter. It's hard to obviously make any firm conclusions right now. But you know, a big cargo ship like that would not intentionally have tried to go under that bridge. I think we can all conclude that. Yeah, and the size of the vessel, the speed she was moving, which was under pilotage and two pilots on board, and that's their responsibility to obviously make sure the vessel of that, of that nature is, is under control. I can't possibly comment on that, but it seems very bizarre that uh, this occurred, but apparently there's a loss of power on board the vessel which is devastating. And uh, the, once that happens and then the speed of that current at that night, limited darkness, limited visibility, mm. yeah, all, all the dots join up. And that's the, the worst of these things. It's, it's always going to be when you don't expect it to be. And the impact is absolutely devastating, extraordinary. Yeah. But uh, thank uh, goodness uh, they got the Mayday signal off and they, they stopped on the traffic crossing the bridge too. Indeed. I mean, just some people did act very fast, which was uh, in incredible. <laughs> uh, otherwise, this might have been a whole lot worse. And I, I suppose, you know, you talked about yeah. it being a very... You know, in river terms, it's relatively shallow. Uh, but, of course, rivers get dark the deeper you go down. I mean, you're a man that's dived to the Titanic, for goodness sake. You know what a depth looks like and you know how dark it can get down there without the right equipment. And that, I would imagine, um, is, again, if you talk about things that, that, that get in the way of trying to uh, rescue somebody, by definition, uh, the, the darkness is a, a, a huge enemy of any rescue down there. 100% absolutely, Ian. But I think that the upside is that technology is so advanced now and so incredible that you don't have to feed drones. They can have underwater duration of extraordinary uh, time and, and the power that exists and the technology that exists way, way exceeds any kind of capability that a, a human diver could have. So, you know, you could not deploy more incredible and more probably responsive uh, equipment and, and have a more responsive organization and operation of the US Coast Guard. Indeed. Um, well, we hope and pray that, that there are successful rescues um, and that they're able to bring this fully under control. It, it appears that all the right people are on the scene attending to this. And of course, we will have full updates. But Dick, thank you very much indeed for your time, My really pleasure. appreciate it. That's an expert voice there, Dick Barton, former director of operations at RMS, RMS Titanic with us on the programme.